Thanks a million, Damien. Um, yeah, my name is, uh, as Damien said, JP O'Connell. Um, just you're all very welcome, I suppose, to the, the presentation here this evening, where we'll be talking about dealing with setbacks in sport and I suppose your, de your development as well outside of GEA. Um, just a little, I suppose, introduction for, for a minute. Um, as Damien said, professionally, I suppose I, I work as a social worker. Um, I'm working in child protection currently. Um, and also, I suppose I'll be moving to fostering quite soon. So I have a real interest, I suppose, in, in child development and parenting strategies and essentially outcomes for children as well, I suppose, as a result of, of all of that. Um, I'm also a parent. I have I have a 17 year old son, almost 18 year old son, um, who's also been through I suppose the academy system here, um, predominantly with the Galway footballers really. Um, so I've, I suppose I've experienced as a, as a parent um, as well as maybe a player in that in, in, in when I was younger as well. Um, just as a player and a coach, as Damien said, I've played both hurling and football um, for Clare Galway and Karen Moore. Um, I would have played Fitzgibbon Cup as well with NUIG. I suppose I was lucky enough to win a Fitzgibbon Cup medal in 2010. Um, and I would have played football as well. I, I was on the Galway senior football panel, I suppose, back in 2010 as well, just for kind of FBD League and National League and that under Joe Kernan. Um, so I suppose that I am aware that there's hurlers and footballers on, on the, the call this evening. So I just, I suppose I have a background or experience maybe in, in both codes. Um, and then management and coaching as well. I've, un, I've coached and managed, I suppose, underage again in both codes, with both clubs. Um, Fitzgibbon Cup in, in, in UIG also in 2015. And uh, the Abbey my senior hurlers as well a couple of years back. Um, so as I said, today we'll just be speaking about dealing with setbacks um, and your development outside of GEA. And I suppose it's just important to be maybe, you know, open and transparent and, and realistic as well, I suppose, with, with everyone. And, you know, even for yourselves, you know, the young people on the call and, and the players and that. And uh, it's it's a super competitive environment, I suppose, you know, the journey that you're on. And it, it really is a super competitive um, environment. And if we look even... I suppose disappointment and deselection, even if we start with disappointment, um, it's a guarantee in sport, you know. Um, it's 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 inevitable. There's if we look at the numbers here, even you know, talking from talking to Damien and Dennis there, and especially in Galway, I think it's a very competitive county as well in both codes. We're very lucky that we're competitive, I suppose, at the top table in both codes. Um, but it means for you, you know, and for players and aspiring players and that it's even more competitive. So the lads were saying they might have 250, you know, young people coming in every year for each age group. And, you know, they're trying to whittle that down maybe to possibly, you know, an A, B or C squad. Um, and even following on from that, you're talking about looking to progress to maybe county minor squads and that. There's, there's 32 players picked for that, I suppose. Following on from that, you've, you know, you're looking... They're looking for 24 players for match day squads and then a start in 15 as well. So all along the way, there's going to be dis disappointments and setbacks and there's going to be lads, you know, disappointed that they didn't make the A squad, the B squad, maybe even the C squad, didn't make the match day 24 um, uh, even or, or the starting team. And I suppose the other thing is it gets nearly more competitive as you're going along as well because you've, I suppose you've one year's uh, players feeding into under 14, under 15, under 16, then under 17, basically county minor, you're going to have the best under 16s and the best under 17s. Under 20, you're going to have the best maybe under 18s, under 19s and under 20s. Um, and then obviously senior is another ball game again, uh, where there's huge competition to try and get into that senior squad of, of 32 players. And that's not to say, you know, that I suppose things, you know, that it's not possible or you know, we're not saying, you know, not to dream big and not to have hopes and aspirations, but it's just, I suppose, the reality that there will be a lot of setbacks, you know, there will be deselection along the way. Um, and that's just part of it, I suppose. And then even, you know, sport in general, even apart from deselection and all of that, if you do make the team and you do play a senior inter-county and you progress, you know, we're talking about things like you miss an equalising free in an All-Ireland final. I know Joe Canning had it a couple of years ago. Luckily, he put it over the bar. But, you know, if you're to miss that free, how do you deal with that? Does that? How is that going to impact on you? Is it going to really affect your, I suppose, your mental health or your well-being? Are you going to beat yourself up? Or are you going to be able to kind of get on with things, you know, and, and shake yourself down, I suppose? So 
it's just outlining really, I suppose, and, and being transparent that the journey that you're on, there'll be lots of setbacks, I suppose, and uh, and disappointments along the way. Um, and that's, as I said, I suppose, so we're talking here about can you apply yourself but not obsess, I suppose. Um, you often hear, you know, you need to be obsessed about the sport and the hurling and football. And in ways you kind of do. Like we're all for sleeping with the hurl, you know, having the two footballs in your hand, developing technically your right foot, your left foot, um, your weaker side in the hurl and all of that. Um, so we're not denying the importance of having dreams, hopes, goals and really good application to realise those dreams and hopes and goals, you know. Um, but I suppose there's a few questions here I'd be asking, is is an obsession healthy, I suppose? And I just have a, a brief definition here of one. And it's uh, an idea or thought that continually preoccupies or intrudes on a person's mind. Um, so I suppose I'd be asking the questions here as well. Is that conducive to positive well-being, to positive mental health? Um, does it sound too constant? Um, does it allow for time to switch off? And I'd also be asking, do we all need a break? You know, there, there are questions you can think about for yourselves there for a moment or whenever you want to, you know, in the future. But I suppose for me, I suppose it does sound a little bit too constant. Um, I, it might not really, I suppose, allow for time to switch off. And I definitely agree that we all definitely need a break from, from everything and a kind of change of scenery in that, you know, a recharge the batteries, I suppose, really. Um, and that's important for kind of hurling and, and football as well, you know. Um, and I think good management teams, I suppose, really appreciate that. I was, I was at a talk, a webinar a couple of weeks ago or months ago, and Johnny Cooper was there. And he basically said that the Dublin senior football team, I suppose, they have three sessions a week, a Tuesday, Thursday, and a game at the weekend. At the weekend. And I just thought it was, I thought it was brilliant, really. But, I, I mean, they're probably the best prepared team Certainly under the Jim Gavin era, era, I suppose. I'm not sure about the Desi Farrell era yet, but the Jim Gavin era, they're the best prepared team I've ever seen, really. Um, and they're kind of able to do it in that, you know, two or three days a week. So I think in Dublin, that particular, you know, setup, they have a real appreciation that for players' time and that it's important for players to develop outside of their football careers, you know, and that they're developing in other ways, um, be that career or academically in relationships and spending time with family and all of that. Um, so I just thought that was uh, a good point just to include. So like that, we're asking here this evening, I suppose, really how, you know, it's another question, really. There's a lot of questions throughout the, the presentation or, I suppose, things to reflect on. So how is my life outside of the GEA? Um, and I know Damien and Dennis and the Galway Academy system are big on the three thirds. Um, so you're talking the academic, family and the sporting lives. Um, so it's it's not kind of putting 100% of your focus on the sport and maybe neglecting your academic or your career uh, or your relationships and your family and stuff like that. Um, and as well, I know academic is here, but I think it's really important. I'm sure there's lots of young people on this call and they're listening in and school maybe isn't for them or, you know, they're not really that, I suppose, um, maybe, you know, they're just not that academically minded. They don't really have aspirations to go to third level school as I said isn't for them and that's fine um absolutely but we'd also be asking you well what you know what are what are your other areas or what, what are your interests I suppose maybe, or maybe you won't go to third level but where what are you going to do maybe when you finish school or that type of thing and um, you know as regards career and all that have you um you know you might have an interest in you know being cars and you want to be a mechanic you know would you be thinking about maybe setting up your own garage um you might want to do a trade, you know, maybe become a plumber or that. And, you know, can you look at maybe getting an apprenticeship somewhere and doing your qualifications that way? Um, and I know Martin there a fortnight ago spoke about a lot of this, so I won't get into it in too much detail. But, um, you know, that's what we're asking, really. How, how are you getting on in these other areas? Because we don't want, I suppose, you neglecting your career or your academic life or your family life and your relationships outside outside of sport, just for sport. Um, and just, I suppose, in addition to that, I suppose, I, I just share about third level as a developmental, I suppose, or a development pathway for young athletes and hurlers and footballers like yourself. I suppose I have to, and even from my own experience of it, it is, you know, it, it is a really good pathway for, for development in GEA. You know, you might go into NUIG there or GMIT or wherever, 
um, in a couple of years' time, and you, next thing you're playing freshers hurling, freshers football, and you're meeting other players from all over the country, and you're competing with you know high level players as well, county players from other other counties, and um, you're playing against, um, as I said, county players. You're playing with county players, and it's just getting you, it's getting you really good exposure, I suppose, to high level sports, you know. Um, and it can also increase your belief because you might get exposed to these. You could miss maybe the grade in Galway for maybe making a county minor squad or an under-20 squad or that. And you might get opportunities to get exposed to that level of sport. Um, and it's a great shop window as well because I know all the, you know, the, the inter-county senior managers in that um, are really watching those games. They're going to those games. They're looking out for players so you can unearth any kind of I suppose unheard of talented players in that, and um, and going on from that, if you manage to win a Fitzgibbon or a Sigerson or anything like that, there's nearly an automatic. I'd say three or four players are brought into the county panel, uh, you know, on the back of that. So it's it really is a, a good pathway, I suppose. If you don't make we make it, we'll say through the mainstream minor and county under under twenty setups uh, in Galway, that's definitely um, uh, something to consider. You know, it's an incentive maybe as well to. To want to go to third level as well as all the other the other benefits. Um, I suppose we'll be talking about friendships as well, and including local and national school friend, friends and friendships. And I suppose it's really important to to maybe you know remember remember that as well. You might be, as I said, you know you're involved in county squads now, and maybe in a couple of years you might make minor squads. And if you have success within those minor squads as well, you will form really close. Bonds, I suppose, and friendships with your your players on those panels. But um, I suppose you do start with the club, and you always come back to the club. Um, and I suppose those friendships, it's just you know they're they're priceless, really. So it's always about you know maintaining those friendships, and it's about remaining humble as well. I suppose you know and and grounded. Um, they're two you know brilliant characteristics I think in any young fella so um it's about remaining humble and grounded and that's even if you do win an All-Ireland minor or do play um you know county senior and win an All-Ireland and everything it's just it's you know I suppose we'd be promoted to stay humble and stay grounded and, and not forget your roots really you know um in a lot of ways and as well open and open to learning and I know Tony O was on a month ago and he mentioned that as well and even the lads in the academy pro are promoting that a lot. That um, that you remain open to learning because we all, I suppose, we all always have have work on, and there's no there's no finished article really. Even the likes of Shane Walsh, who's an absolutely you know technically gifted footballer, he still has work on, and he still will acknowledge that there's I suppose areas for him to uh, improve on, and um, you know, so it's, it is remaining humble and grounded and open to learning, even. If you do succeed at the highest level in that, you know, um, and again, then we're talking about our life outside of hurling, outside of you know, even the family and the academic hobbies, um, you know, it's I think it's nice to you know at times you probably we'll all need a break from hurling football. It might get a bit much, and you need a couple of weeks off, or it could be off season or whatever. So it's like, am I developing you know outside of the GEA as well? Have I hobbies and interests? It could be. You know, golf is a lovely sport. A lot of you'd be very coordinated. You'd be able to play it. Um, probably some very good golfers on the call. Um, music, you know, can you play an instrument? That type of thing. You might like to travel as well. So I suppose it's it's about kind of becoming a bit more grounded, I suppose, and rounded um, individual, really. And it doesn't have to be, obviously, any of those three things there that I mentioned. It can be, you know, whatever your interests are. Um, it can be absolutely anything, really. Whatever kind of sw helps you to switch off, I suppose, is, is the key. Um, and just here again, I know the lads, you know, within the academy are big on, I suppose, leaders in, in the club and leaders in the community and even what you're learning here through the strength and conditioning and the, um, the S&C, as I said, and the nutrition and all of that, that you're bringing that maybe back into, you know, your clubs and your community and you're helping your, you know, your teammates in the club and you're helping the club become a better team and you're helping your club players become better players. Um, and basically, as I said, just leaders uh, in the community. And uh, you can just take a look at that photo there for a second. Um, some of you might know them. Um, we've Jeremy Mullen there um, and Connor Walsh, or Connor Flaherty, sorry. Um, Jeremy is from the Thurrock Moor Hurling Club and the Clare Gala Football Club, and Connor is Karen Moore Hurling Club and uh, Clare Gala Football Club. 
and I'm not just being biased <laughs> and promoting uh, all the, the local homegrown players of that, but um, I just thought it was incredible what they did. They raised 47,800 and uh, I think 46 euro for Pieta West, um, which is, I suppose, a charity and an organisation that supports um, people that have, and families and people that have been impacted, I suppose, and touched by, by suicide, which obviously has touched and impacted a lot of families. Um, and I just thought they did a shave, a shave or die type of a fundraiser um, and they raised that much money. And uh, it just shows what you can almost do as, you know, young academy players and ambassadors, really, of, of, of Galway GEA Academies and of Galway GEA. Um, I think it's a great example and it's something that, you know, you could look to doing in the future as well. And there's no doubt when you're talking about self-esteem and self-worth and stuff that, the two lads got a lot in in in, ter in in terms of that from those kind that kind of fundraising and that kind of an action, you know. So it's a really positive impact that they've made in their their local community. Um, and Connor would have played just as was a special mention. He would have played county under twenty hurling and football last year. So he was centre back for the hurlers and in goals for the footballers. So um, yeah, he had a very successful year as well. Um, so. And as I said, doing that and making that positive impact in the community as well. Uh, a great example, I think. And this guy, Jack McCaffrey, I'm sure most of you know, um, Dublin footballer. Um, this kind of picture really caught my eye. This is from the 2019 All-Ireland Football Final. And it's from the parade <laughs> before the game, Dublin v Kerry. And I just thought, wow, like, look at him. He's kind of happy. He's smiling. He doesn't look like a player that's kind of overawed by the occasion or anxious or um, I'm sure he must have had some, you know, level of nerves. I'd love to talk to him actually, but um, he certainly seems kind of present and in the moment. And uh, I suppose just about Jack as well, the, the bit I know about him, he's actually, he's obviously a qualified doctor and he's been through the college thing. I think he's two or three Sigerson Cup ones as well, or Sigerson Cups one. Um, but I just thought something really interesting as well about him. And it's kind of, it links in well to the theme of this presentation, I suppose. Um, in 2015, he won Footballer of the Year. And the following year, 2016, he decided to take a year out. And he travelled abroad um, to develop, I suppose, um, his career, really. Um, and to gain experience as, as a, a doctor. Um, and I just thought, it, he's a brilliant example of someone who's not defined by being a hurler or being a footballer or being an athlete obviously he, he, there's more to him than just that it's a part of him it's like one of the thirds that the lads are promoting but it's it's not all of him I suppose you know um, and I just I just thought not many players I think would be able to do that because a lot of players are caught up I suppose in their identity really is is all about being a hurler or a footballer um, and they nearly wouldn't be able to walk away from the limelight or the attention or all of that that, that he was getting I suppose but he was able to do that. So again, a great example of someone who is a very kind of, I suppose, rounded and balanced kind of individual, really, and um, is kind of developing in all areas of his life. Um, so that's that's kind of Jack McCaffrey, yeah. Um, so again, why is all of this important, I suppose? And it's, again, when the disappointment comes, it might not hit as hard if we're more balanced and round if we are a more balanced and rounded individual. Um, and as I said, the disappointment is a guarantee. There's going to be ups and downs, and that's not even just in sport, that's that's in life. There's going to be challenges along the way. Um, but one of the major uh, benefits, I think, of having uh, been this rounded, I suppose, person and having you know stuff going on outside of sport and that is when when you are playing sport that your whole sense of self and your whole identity isn't based upon just being that footballer so that mean or that hurler so that means that when you're going out in the field and you're playing the game that there's not as much pressure on you because it's like this isn't defining me you know this is just part of my life it's a game but it's not defining me i'm also you know i'm a good brother i'm a good son um i'm a good you know friend to my friends i i play music i enjoy golf i play soccer in pre or in off season um i want to go to maybe third level i want to be a teacher i want to maybe you know be a mechanic and there's everything your, your whole sense of self i suppose isn't based on being um just a hurler or a footballer and that actually relieves i think some of the that performance anxiety we call it um, when you are playing games um, 
and you should be you know calmer I think out in the field and have a kind of clearer mind really and just following on from that as well here we have I think clearer thinking equals better decisions um, and I think if we look at Dublin and Limerick especially Limerick last year they just blew me away the way they used the ball and the hurling and um, if you just the way they hand passed the ball around the middle of the, the field, the way they kind of drew in defenders and made space and used space and broke tackles, and they were incredible, like you know. But I was just thinking, like for me, decision making on the field is so important, and um, they were they brought that to another level, like um, last year. So again, obviously, there was a lot of clarity of mind up in the field, and they were in a, a place where they were able to make good decisions. Dublin again under that Jim Gavin era, and. Um, if you look at their wide counts, like they didn't, they didn't, they didn't kick wides hardly. You know, one and two a game, three and four a game, one and two a half. Like incredible statistics, but that meant that they made hundreds of good decisions to work them into those places. I suppose to to shoot from you know the the ninety and the 80, 90 percent opportunities really, rather than shooting from the twenty or thirty percent opportunities. But again, all all about good decision making and all about clarity of mind. And I think the two of these link in really well. Um, again, Jack McCaffrey, um, he won Man of the Match in that All Ireland final, and he was smiling, going around at the parade beforehand, you know. Um, and it's that whole championship versus um, challenge match thing. And this is even some of my own experience as a player. I know you turn up to a challenge match, you wouldn't even have thought about it the night before. You might turn up 25 minutes before the game, you do a quick warm up, you go out on the field, and there's no nerves, there's no performance anxiety, and you know, you play quite well, your touch is in, all of that. Um, and probably some of the best games I know I ever played anyways were probably challenge matches because I didn't have that performance anxiety, you know. And um, then maybe on championship, you build it up to this massive thing and it's starting to define you. And again, maybe you start dropping balls that you wouldn't normally drop or, you know, you, you make poor decisions that you wouldn't normally make just because you don't have that clarity of mind. So in some ways, I think the trick is trying to, to work, you know, to treat every game as a challenge match as such, you know. Um, and I think Jack McCaffrey kind of, walking around in the parade having a laugh and or, or a smile for himself um, is a, maybe an example of that. Um, I just have a little video here for a minute and I hope technology will be will be kind to us. Um, I'll just introduce it first, I suppose. This is Mike, Dr. Michael Gervais. He's a performance psychologist with Seattle Seahawks, um, uh, American football team. And... I know a couple of years ago, he was brought in as a mindfulness coach initially with the Seattle Seahawks, and they weren't a very prominent, I suppose, American football team. And next thing he started working with them, and they won uh, a couple of Super Bowls, and now they're kind of, I think they're at the top table um, year in, year out nearly. They're, they're a top kind of team, I suppose. Um, so he's worked with them, and this is just a little clip maybe for um, about a minute. So, about a minute. Um, so we'll take a listen. We can listen to that for a minute. That's why, like, when we go out and quote-unquote perform, it feels like our identity is completely enmeshed with what we do. So when we go try to do something, it's our identity at stake, as opposed to the freedom to go express. The love of going and fighting and competing for that last inch or that, you know, one blade of grass or whatever it might be. Totally different mindset. And so if an athlete has developed this mindset that it's hard to get free on game day, one of the things to look at is what are you really afraid of? I would bet a lot that what most people are afraid of is looking bad. The fear of letting others down and not being enough in the eyes of the people that they care about. So as parents, as coaches, what we can do is decouple what you do from who you are. Tell them how much you love them, independent of what they can do, and then help them be great students. A beginner's mind goes a long way in life. Yeah, so... Um... I just think that's very interesting and even I'm sure there's a lot of parents listening in as well and it's kind of interesting for, for everyone really and he says a lot, he talks about that growth mindset at the end, having a beginner's mind goes a long way um, so that's again being humble and open to learning and you're always looking to improve and focus as well on work-ons and that um, but he speaks about the identity being on the line as well on game day and he talks about if players are struggling to to, to free themselves, I suppose, on game day, you know, um, that he's basically, he's pretty sure that they're afraid they're going to look bad, you know, in front of an audience or in front of whoever's watching. Um, and then he talks about, again, separating, you know, the uh, you, the person, basically the athlete from the actual person. Um, 
So I think it's very interesting. Um, he also mentions for parents there, and I suppose as a parent, I know myself as well, um, and I know all the endless, or a guardian, should I say as well, parent or guardian, I know all the endless hours um, and, and time and energy that you've put into, I suppose, you know, supporting your children's journey um, uh, in, in hurling and football and their progression in that. But um, he also speaks about, I suppose, the parents and the coaches accepting and loving the children anyways. And I think that's going to actually help the child's kind of performance or the young person's performance as well, if they don't feel too much pressure maybe from their parents. And that the parents are basically saying things to them like, well, look at, go out, enjoy the game. And, you know, I love you anyways, regardless whether you play good or bad, whether you have a good performance or a bad performance, whether you win or you lose, whether you're taken off or you don't start or no matter what the situation is. And I think that's all going to help and the young person as well and it's going to kind of ease that level of of pressure on them as well you know and again it means that their whole sense of self and their whole identity won't be um isn't dependent on them being a hurler or a footballer or how they perform um so that's it folks we're, we're almost there i think um just a couple of key messages i suppose for a finish um from today so we're saying dream big you know i know there was a lot of you know, reality there, I suppose, around numbers, around deselection, around the competitiveness competitiveness of, of this journey that you're all on. But by all means, still go for it. Dream big. Want to make the A squad. Want to make the A team. Want to play county minor, hurling or football. Want to progress to the senior grade, basically. Want to win in All-Ireland. Want to win player of the year, even. Like, I, we're definitely saying do not limit yourselves, you know. And... Um, Dream big, don't limit yourself, um, keep an open mind to every possibility, basically, you know. Um, apply yourself as well. Um, so sleep with the hurl, be playing with two footballs, developing your left hand, your right hand, your left solo, your right solo, um, your strength and conditioning, um, your uh, nutrition, all of that. Um, apply yourself, basically, is what we're saying as well, you know. Um, Accept that disappointments are part of sport and life. Um, and I, I, I was kind of laughing. I was writing this earlier. I played, as I said, I played about 20 years senior hurling for Karen Moore. And I'd say the first 10, I think our first year we got to a county semi-final and it was nearly a guarantee that we'd get to a quarter final every year after that. And the last 10, well, for we'd say the next eight or nine years, and for the last 10, we were in relegation, I'd say nine of those years. <laughs> um so I was just thinking about that today and all the disappointments. So every year we basically got bet in three or four group games or whatever the, the format was. Um, so the amount of disappointment that was along the road was just huge, you know. But we just never got relegated. And then we'd win the relegation and it was like our county final. And uh, it was incredible. But um, So there's certainly, you know, accept, I suppose, that there are disappointments um, along the way uh, and challenges. Um, focus on development outside of GEA. Again, school, career, third level maybe education, um, apprenticeships, you know, Mark Marchin spoke a lot about all of that there about two weeks ago, um, friendships, you know, as we spoke about earlier in our community, you know, adding to our community, making positive contributions, um, you know, have hobbies as well outside of the GEA, uh, activities where you can switch off and that you can enjoy, um, and I'd certainly be recommending any kind of volunteering or fundraising like uh, Jeremy Mullen and Connor, Connor uh, Flaherty. Um, brilliant examples of that as well. And you, that's very rewarding as well. You, you will, you know, you'll get reward from that as well. You know, you'll feel good about yourself. So we, we'd really be, you know, recommending that. And finally, I suppose, um, play with freedom uh, and do not let your performance as an athlete or as a hurler or a footballer define you. That's that's very important, I think. And, and always remember, I suppose, that you are more than a hurler or a footballer as well, you know. Um, you are that and you're probably quite talented at that if you're in in, in, in here. But um, you're more than that as well, you know. Um, so that's it, Damien, I think. Um, JP, a, a phenomenal presentation. A lot of learning there for myself as well as the Young Academy um players in hurling and football. Uh, Dennis Carr has a few questions in there. Dennis, will you yeah. address those to JP? If you don't mind, JP, and thank you. Cheers, JP. Just a couple of questions come in there. Um, uh, one from, um, say, the player. Have you any advice for a player who, who doesn't make a squad, say, be it be uh, say a minor squad or a school team or something? Uh, what's the best way to deal with this uh, from a player point of view? 
Yeah, I suppose, I suppose look at a lot of the stuff that we spoke about there. Firstly, I think, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't, I think, don't maybe beat yourself up. Again, a lot of the stuff we spoke about there, you know, realising that you're more than just a hurler. You're just a footballer. There's, there is more to life. This is a game at the end of the day. It's not going to pay your bills. It's not going to put a car on the road for you. You're probably not worried about mortgages yet, but it's not going to pay a mortgage either. So, you know, it is just a game. So I think coming at it from, from that perspective um, and realising that there's more to you, I suppose. And secondly, there's the whole application piece then after that. So, you know, maybe talking to 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 a coach or, you know, looking for work-ons, looking for feedback, looking, you know, at areas that you can improve on and, and coming back, you know, better and stronger and more, you know, technically better as well, maybe. In a, in a couple of years time and I always found if I was ever dropped anyways I'd love to try and come back and <laughs> prove a manager wrong to be honest um, now may I, not, I don't know if that's a very healthy approach to it all but it was definitely um, you know work hard and, and, and come back and, and, and prove yourself I suppose in, in a lot of ways um, and prove that that coach or manager made, made a, a wrong decision and uh, just on that as well I suppose Coaches and managers, it's not an easy job, I suppose. They're kind of dictated by numbers in a lot of ways. And, you know, they can only maybe pick 32 of a squad, for example, a county minor squad. They can only pick 24 on a match day and they can only pick a start in 15. So sometimes they have to make difficult decisions. And sometimes there's very little in it. It could be, it just could be just a little personal, I don't know, opinion. And, they, you know, they do get it wrong as well from time to time. Um, but that's it, I think, yeah, it's about looking at yourself um as more than the hurler and footballer, applying yourself and trying to come back stronger, you know. Great, and just one in here from a parent, um, just came in there about uh, how can I best support my son as well, you know, that, that uh, didn't make a squad. You know, they're going to be disappointed at home, they're going to be mm. obviously talking to their parents or guardians. Um, so, yeah. any advice from a parent? Okay. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good question. First, just to acknowledge, like I did earlier, I suppose, all the brilliant work that parents are doing and the time and the energy and the effort and the money and everything that they put into I suppose their, their children's development um, and a lot of these parents are coaching their, their kids as well in the clubs and stuff so it's really important to acknowledge that um, I think I suppose it's it's important like that to maybe in some ways let the, let the, let the young people have their own experience and their own journey and they're going to be disappointed with getting dropped anyways, I'm sure they're going to have their own experiences around that. And just to try and step back and make sure that as a parent, you're not putting your disappointment on them as well, you know, or you're not, you know, making them feel like, you know, you let them down or they let you down because they got dropped and any of that. And again, I think just reassuring them that, um, you know, that you you love them, which look at I can say it honestly here. I know every, every parent or guardian here, you know, on the call or if they're listening, you know, love their their, their, their their children anyways, you know, whether they probably play hurling or football or not. So just reassuring them that really. And yeah, let them have their own experience with it and just support them maybe if they want to apply themselves more, work harder and come back stronger or whatever, you know. Um, and there's so much enjoyment as well to be gotten out of the club scene, you know, club hurling and club football. You can have amazing experiences through that as well you know so it's I suppose the county isn't to be all in the end goal either so you know if you can go back to your club you can enjoy you know playing with them and um, you know again if you're enjoying it you'll probably play better and you're more likely to get uh, a call back in the future as well at county level maybe you know so. yeah. Cheers JP and <clears throat> fair play to you covered um, an awful lot of different subjects there and uh, a lot of issues as well so cheers for that yeah, look at JP, thanks very much. Sincere thanks. Um, 